Greece on Thanksgiving. Never heard. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship as we gather together on this Sunday, and it is with anticipation of the Thanksgiving celebration that we have here in our nation, uh, anticipating that this Thursday. Um, it's also a festival Sunday of Christ the King, so it is the last Sunday of the church year, uh, beginning Advent next Sunday. So it is good to remember uh, that in the bulletin there is the turkey challenge uh, and also um, the hanging of the greens happens later on today. But the turkey challenge is one that I know uh, many have already given to and will continue uh, through, I think today is the last day, if I understand that right. Um, we know that there are many other announcements of upcoming outreach and events. Please keep that in mind as you look through your uh, bulletins and as you have looked through onto the monitor today. This afternoon is the community Thanksgiving worship service at 3 p.m. And tell me again, is that 12th Street? 15th Street uh, Methodist Church. And that is at 3 o'clock. Uh, some who are participating in the choir are coming at 2 o'clock to practice. Uh, let me ask, are there any other announcements? I do have a few more prayer requests. Any other announcements? Okay, please keep... Oh, here we go. Yes. Mike Ryling. Mike Ryland. Please remember Mike. Um, Mike ha owns a business here in Huntington, and we uh, want to remember him in prayer. Thank you, Sam. We'll keep Mike in our prayers. Um, the two other requests we had this morning, uh, one from Louida, her sister in Tennessee, uh, it's her husband, Chris, is under doctor's care, went to the emergency room last night, is on antibiotics, still hospitalized, and may need uh, emergency surgery. So please remember Chris um, in your prayers. And also, uh, Kathy Klein just mentioned that her cousin, Steve Hall, um, had some damage in a chemical fire uh, with the burns to his lungs. And he is now under doctor's care. Uh, he has been hospitalized and now at home with his son, right? And uh, they are caring for each other in the midst. And we remember uh, Steve in our prayers this day as well. Okay, other announcements this day? Please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ. We worship together this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please rise for the call to worship. Worship Christ, eternal Son of God. Honor Christ, incarnate Son of Mary. Serve Christ, glorious ruler of creation. For to Christ belong the power and the glory of the Almighty. Praise, Praise be, be to, to God. God. With humble hearts, trusting in grace, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we have neglected to declare Jesus the King and model for our lives. We have been quick to call on others to follow the ways of Christ yet slow to do the same. We have been bold in demanding generosity, mercy, and forgiveness, yet quiet when it comes to offering inclusion, love, and compassion. Forgive us, O oh God. Restore in us, yet again, the commitment to be more Christ-like in word, in deed, and in spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. All things in heaven and on earth are reconciled to God in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is ours through faith in the Lord, in whom God was pleased to dwell. Know that you are forgiven. Be at peace.
Our first scripture reading is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our next reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 11 through 21. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to run to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you, And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Reading from the Gospel of John, it is not out of Luke today, it is the Gospel of John, chapter 6. When they found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we might see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. 
And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please pray with me, if you will. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, who is our strength, our very life. Amen. Yes, our traditional national Thanksgiving Day is this Thursday. How can that be, right? Time just seems to go so quickly. The change of weather reminds us that we are entering latter days of November, yet time continues. Like, wait, it was just 70 degree temperatures in latter October, and so quickly, here we are in the midst of snow and the cold breezes that greet us in the mornings. Our culture wants us to move, doesn't it? Move to the next thing quickly. And we notice from that October to late December, sometimes it's like a blur, right? A blur of the holidays together. Not even the end of October, Halloween, and then we start seeing the Christmas coming. And then where's Thanksgiving in the midst, right? Well, even in the fullness of our days and the rush that comes, it is good to be mindful, mindful, and to number our days, because each and every day has so much to offer, and we don't want to miss it. Our days are lived out, our life is lived out day to day, and we don't want to miss what is good of each and every day. Jesus' disciples were looking for him in this Gospel of John passage. And it was after the miraculous feeding, feeding with two loaves and the fish. And there were so many around, thousands around. And Jesus took the fish and the loaves, blessed them and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to distribute. With God's blessing... They fed everyone and had enough left over to continue to share. What abundant generosity of an amazing God. And so then these disciples were looking for this Jesus. You know, where, where is he? We want to find him. And the conversation continued. What were they truly looking for? And Jesus reminds them, it's not just for the food that perishes, because we need sustenance every day, don't we? We need to have our, meal, our meals, if we're fortunate enough to have meals. Some people across our globe don't. But sustenance physically, but also in our spirit and in our heart and mind. For that food that endures... Jesus was helping them to see there indeed was something more, something eternal. This passage recalls that manna was given in the wilderness for the journey, for their ancestors. And the food was provided for their learning and continuing on. But they grumbled, didn't they? We know that there was grumbling going on for that manna even was provided but you know what? There they were in the desert. But God provided. And Jesus was reminding the people in this passage that God is providing. God provides. And when Jesus took those loaves and the fish and blessed it and broke it, it reminds us also of that Greek word, if you will, the taking of the bread and the juice and blessing it and giving it, distributing it. The Eucharistic feast is also known as a great thanksgiving. A little morsel of bread, a little bit to drink from the vine, 
and there is a banquet, a prelude to a banquet. So here's so much here of what God's generosity, God's provision is for us. From John 6, again, I'm just going to read a couple of those passages. It was not Moses, not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. Jesus said, it's my Father who gives you this true bread from heaven. And the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life, life to the world. And they said to him, please, sir, give us this bread. We want this bread, right? Daily nourishment and that focus, not only for body, but mind and spirit. We are all of that and we need to nurture our lives. God knows that. Our lives are lived out from the sunrise to the sunset and some say from one evening sunset to the next sunset. And we hear that prayer, give us, Lord, our daily bread in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Give us, O oh Lord, our daily bread. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And we hold that for those in our world that we know do not have enough. But they reach out and together we have enough to share. So we share the gifts of God. It's a gift to receive these wonderful ways that God has provided with thanksgiving and with awe to know that there is a God who cares that much about us and helps us to be able to share what we have in our spirit, in our thoughts and mind, as well as our physical food and, and gifts. The Ephesians passage is a great hymn of what we have already been given in Christ and that community that shares it. From Ephesians, I'll read just a few more verses uh, that were already read, chap chapter 1 and 15. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. God has so much in store for our spirit, our minds, our thoughts, and our sustenance daily. I want to thank you here at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ because there are ways that you are reaching out. Not everybody knows everything that the next person is doing. You're doing that individually, but also as a family of faith. You're doing this with God's goodness and God's grace. And is there anticipating more, leaning into more of what God has? Yes, sure. But this is all, doing this is part of the daily bread that we've been given to share with others. And I see it. I see it happening here. And I'm grateful for that. I know there's many that are grateful. In Psalm 46, we hear, even in times of trouble, there are times that we need to go and embrace this living God all times in our life. But remembering that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear we don't need to succumb to fears that want to crowd out the goodness and the hope. Even in the face of difficulty, there is goodness of God. Verse 10 tells us to be still, to know that I am God. God is speaking to us as a people. God will be exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. It's bigger. It's bigger than just our individual lives, but it includes our individual lives. So as for a national day of Thanksgiving, we have this opportunity to consider the blessings that we share. And we give thanks 
for fertile soil, for harvest time, for flowing water and fresh air that sustains us and all creatures on our earth. We give thanks because it's also a primary expression of faith, expanding our sense of connection and community because of the abundant reach of God's mercy. At the same time, let us remember that God's gift of thanksgiving is not only a national holiday for us, even though we're soon to celebrate that. Our faith lends itself for gratitude far beyond worldly barriers. It includes national borders that, ex that extend beyond those borders. Let us join our voices this Thanksgiving and our lives to raise up with the one whose name is above every name, that above all rule, all authority and power, this is the one who provides even us daily bread. Indeed, we are thankful. Amen. Please pray with me. United with your people across time and place, we pray for this shared world. Lord, we give you thanks for those who are faithful in every land. Sustain your people with your living word. Inspire hospitality toward all who are searching for truth and for hope. Call us into the generous way of living that you have given us an, the example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give thanks for this earth, that plentiful harvest has been brought forth, that you would renew our commitment to share the goodness of this earth, to preserve lands and waters that bring nourishment. We pray for this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give thanks for leaders in our communities. Kindle a passion for peace and for truth, for justice in our national and local elected officials. Curb selfish impulses and guide us toward collaborative solutions, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give thanks for all who provide for others, who sustain caregiver, givers and social workers and volunteers in their efforts. Lord, continue to bring about ways to provide homes and food and employment, medical care to all who are struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give thanks for this congregation, for the Abbey, for those who plan in worship, both in the front areas and also behind the scenes. Instill in us a sense of joy and wonder that we come in connection with you, that we know you as our Lord and Savior, that we continue to walk with you individually and as a community, and as we anticipate what you are bringing into our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we give you thanks for the faithful who now rest in you. Teach us, Lord, by their example and bring us with them into your loving embrace that lasts forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, as we remember everyone connect, connected in this prayer list here at the Abbey as well, and remembering as well, lifting names as Chris and Mike and Steve. You remember all of us, Lord, as we lift these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As a reminder, today is Turkey Challenge Sunday, so we are collecting donations for Thanksgiving meals to contribute to the Huntington Food Pantry. Giant or Wise cards can be, are available for purchase today, and our goal is to collect enough meals uh, to feed at least 25 families. There's also a basket up here where you can donate as well. Offering plates can be found at the entrance of each of the, entrance of the sanctuary. Offerings can be dropped by the church in a slot on the door nearest Moore and 6th Street. Checks can be mailed or can be given electronically on the Abbey's website, and we thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Please join with me in a prayer of dedication of gifts and self. Holy God, you have looked upon your people with mercy, generosity, and love. You have granted your favor to your people, offering them redemption, salvation, and wisdom. And so we offer these gifts for your hurting and broken world. May they be multiplied to do your service. May we be strengthened to do your work. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who multiplied small gifts and fed multitudes. Amen.
Go out into the world in peace, declaring Christ the King and ruler over all creation. Go out into the world with courage, supporting the ways he gives light to those who sit in darkness and guides our feet in the way of peace. May the blessing of God, the Holy Trinity, be with you this day and forevermore.